Here's to the straggly ones, the itchy ones, the black, brown, red, and gray ones, the ones grown by dad, the ones grown for dad. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Sign up now at Movember.com. Could you use 200,000, 500, 1 million, or even three? I'm sure there's something you'd love to get done, and FlexiLine by Capital Direct might be right for you. Call us today to see what's available. To CapitalDirect.ca a sale so big we could only call it the Super Sale. Super savings in every department storewide. TVs, audio, appliances, tops, car starters, and more. Plus, no interest and no payments until 2024. See all the deals at visions.ca. What's the secret to making perfect rice? It's Tilda Basmati. Tilda has been mastering the art of pure basmati for over 50 years. So you get delicious, fluffy rice to elevate your meals. This is rice, perfected. This is Tilda Pure Basmati. Available in traditional basmati and ready to heat flavors. Child artist, we have paint for that. Discover new paint with a tough, resilient finish at Lowe's. Hey, Vanessa. So this is what party at, huh? <laughs> I'm just in the slots for a minute. Oh, I got my little blackjack heater going myself. That's my guy Steve right there. Would be nice to get a king, Steve. Give Fox that king, Steve. Give me the king. King time, Steve. Give me the king, Steve. Steve, we need Give me the a king, 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 Steve. Steve. Give me the king, Steve. 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 is Global News at Noon. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Global News at Noon. The people of Innisfil, Ontario, are just beginning to come to grips with the loss of two members of the Simcoe County Police Service killed while responding to a call inside of a home on Tuesday night. And we are learning more about the officers and their dedication to the service, their community, and their families. With more, let's head to Marianne Demain. Good afternoon, Marianne. Marianne, you're joining us just outside of the uh, Simcoe County Police Office there. What more can you tell us? Well, I can tell you, Candace, it has been a very emotional morning here at the South Simcoe Police Department. And the memorial that's been growing here gets even bigger by the hour. Take a look. It is a pile of dozens of bouquets. Someone even put a toy police car there at the bottom of the lowered flag. It has been a day with not only community members coming by here, but also other police officers from other detachments and other areas, all to show their support for the two fallen officers. And we are learning more about them. Constable Devin Northrup was 33 years old. He had been with the service for six with the mental health crisis support leaving behind his partner and his parents Fifty-four year old Constable Morgan Russell. He was a uniform patrol officer but was also trained as a crisis negotiator three years and leaves behind his wife and teen children. They were both killed Tuesday evening after responding to call at a home here in Innisville. According to the police, they were shot inside the home. And according to the Special Investigations Unit, which is handling part of the investigation, there was an exchange of gunfire between the officers and the suspect. The suspect in this case was killed as a result of that interaction with police. And sources have told Global News that that suspect was 23-year-old Chris Doncaster, who was living 
on that street in that home with his grandparents. Now, as the investigation continues, so does the feeling of community here. They're really banding together to get through their morning. And last night, there was a candlelight vigil in a local church here in Innisfil, bringing together everyone from the community. Also today, people have been coming by the police station to drop flowers and cards, and even to just drop things off like coffee or fruits to the officers inside. Here's how that support is really helping the officers today. All of our members are touched. We, we uh, as members here, we know each other. Everyone knows everyone, and uh, it's been an incredibly uh, difficult past couple days. Um, we're getting through it with the support of our community. We are a very close community, very small town here, and then uh, we are really deeply sad. And um, yeah, whole town is devastated by this incident. We never expected something going to happen in here. It's quite a shock. I mean, you hear about it happening in little other small hamlets and communities, and then when it's your own home, wow. Like, it's just, there's no words to describe our, our, my feelings anyway. Mm -hmm. And anybody I've spoken to, they're, they're saying the same thing. And you can see there are more than a dozen OPP motorcycles lined up there. They pulled up a few moments ago, and it was a very emotional moment with them hopping off their bikes and giving big hugs to the officers here at the South Simcoe Police Department. A really emotional time. But we're looking forward, and the big question is, what will the funeral plans be? At this point, we are hearing that those plans are still in the works, but, Candace, the plan is for a joint funeral. I'll send it back to you. Okay, thanks so much. That's Marianne Demain in Innisfil. The man facing impaired driving charges in a crash that killed an off-duty York Regional Police officer has been denied bail. 23-year-old Hao Zhou Zhou will remain in police custody, although the reason his bail was denied cannot be reported because of a publication ban. His charges are in relation to a September 14th crash that left 38-year-old Constable Travis Gillespie dead. Zhou will next appear in court in mid-November. And we have just learned in the past few minutes, a Florida jury is recommending a life sentence with no parole for Parkland mass shooter Nicholas Cruz. The jury was asked to consider the death penalty for the now 24-year-old, but that decision had to be unanimous. Cruz killed 17 people and injured another 17 when he opened fire inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, back in 2018. The incident remains the deadliest high school mass shooting in American history history. Following the shooting, students founded the advocacy group Never Again MSD, which was successful in tightening Florida's gun laws. A woman was dead after a hit and run early this morning in Mississauga. It happened near the intersection of Hogan Road and Britannia Road, a mixed industrial commercial area just north of Highway for one. Police say shortly after a vehicle fatally struck a pedestrian and fit the scene. The deceased is an elderly woman from Brampton. Investigators are currently looking for a darker colored vehicle that likely has some damage to its front end. Peel Regional Police had this to say about what the driver should do. For the driver of the vehicle that was involved uh, in this collision this morning, we urge the driver to please uh, speak, to counsel, speak to a lawyer and then turn yourself into our major collision bureau investigators or walk into any police station and advise of uh, what transpired. Investigators are urging anyone who witnessed the incident or may have dash cam video to come forward. Okay, time now for a check on the forecast with our meteorologist Anthony Farnell. How's it going, Anthony? How's it feeling out there? <laughs> Well, it's a little cooler than it was yesterday. We got some rain and quite a bit of overnight, Candice, and now uh, those showers have come to an end. So good news for this afternoon. It will definitely be brighter. I'm not saying sunny just yet. We are seeing uh, some brighter skies later, and there may even be some sunshine tomorrow. We're expecting partly bad conditions as well. Let's talk a little bit about the temperature. 12 degrees in Toronto, 10 in London and Windsor, 10 also in towards north at 7 in Sudbury, 8 in North Bay. The warm spot, the big winter right now, Montreal, they're still on the other side of the cold front, but that is going to change. Rain to get through first, and we're still seeing those heavier bands pushing into Peterborough, Kingston, all the way up into the Ottawa Valley as well. Notice how there's not a whole lot left. But there's a special weather statement for eastern Ontario and a rainfall.
fall morning for much of southwestern Quebec, where 30 to 60 millimeters could fall by the time all is said and done. And you can see that purple color. That's 40 millimeters off the east, and another one to two expected around Toronto. So this afternoon, fingers crossed for a few sunny breaks. Either way, it will clear out tonight, and we'll see the temperature start the day tomorrow at about 10. Coming up, we'll take a look at the weekend forecast. Hard to look at this. We're already approaching the next week and loving the shortened weeks. Details ahead. I hear you. Thanks, Anthony. We have a warning now from doctors in Ontario that there could be undiagnosed cases of cancer in the province because of fewer mammograms during the pandemic. The Ontario Medical Association says there were 400,000 fewer mammograms screenings in that period than were forecast. The temporary decrease has led to cases of breast cancer that were more advanced at the time of diagnosis. The association looked at the auto hospital and said pre-COVID about half of breast cancer detected there were through mammograms, but that dropped to less than a third during the pandemic. And adding to the problem, staff shortages, meaning waits for treatment, including surgery, are longer than provincial guidelines. Ontarians 12 and older can now be bivalent COVID-19 booster shot. The Ontario government announced today that eligibility will officially expand October 17th. That's on Monday. Pfizer's updated shot targets Omicron subvariants, which are currently the dominant strains circulating. And the dose can be given at least three six months following either the required two doses or a booster are being made in Quebec for people to get their COVID-19 booster. Hospital admissions are on the rise across the province. The McGill University Health Center staff are treating dozens of new patients coming in with COVID. Epidemiologists say the spike is caused by a number of factors. Students and staff members returning to school and also people spending more time indoors. In addition to that, there has been a decline in the vaccination rate. Only 13% of Quebecers have received a since mid-August, and among young adults, less than half have had a booster. So you put that all together, and you have a fortunate percentage of people catching COVID, and a, a fraction of them becoming sick enough to be hospitalized. You have so many experts that are saying, after five or six months, you need, you need that booster shot. And Pfizer's new vaccine that targets the most recent strains of the Omicron subvariants will be available to Quebecers next week. The health minister's hoping to double the number of people currently being vaccinated in the coming weeks. Marner got back to stop that. Leaps away. It's Canadians who did win it in the preseason won the season opener. <sighs> so the Toronto Leafs got off to a start last night, losing to the Montreal Canadiens in their season opener. It was a fourth affair at Montreal's Bell Centre with William Nylander scoring late for the Leafs to tie the game at three. But the Habs' Josh Anderson scored with 19 seconds left to lift Montreal to a 4-3 victory. The Leafs will look to bounce back in their home opener tonight against the Washington Capitals. Now, last year, the Canadians had an abysmal season, finishing dead last in their division. But before last night's game, Montreal Canadiens general manager Ken Hughes spoke to the media about his expectations. He does acknowledge the Canadians are a young team, but says he's looking for real growth this season. We understand that, that we're probably not the favorites to challenge for the Stanley Cup. And when you're in this type of environment, we have to find a way where players are pushing to get better and pushing as a group and individually. So if we see that and we see that type of progress, I guess that's success for us. The team will be led by the team's youngest captain in franchise history, Nick Suzuki. The Habs hit the road to face off against the Red Wings tomorrow night at 7. Coming up on Global News at noon, the Emergencies Act inquiry gets underway in Ottawa. Canadians can expect to happen over the next several weeks. If you're tired of grocery delivery under delivery, then it's time to try Voila by Sobeys. Our food is always free. Or it's free. Groceries stay refrigerated all the way to your door. And just what you've ordered arrives when you want it to. 
satisfaction guaranteed. You might feel bad, but it only feels that way. Voila by Sobeys. Your grocery delivered just like that. Cause I've had enough. It's about time for some good news. I've been waiting on some good news. To all those who choose good, you inspire us. Driven by good. It's the family cottage, but if you asked any of us, it was really Grandpa's happy place. Every day he'd get up first, especially sunrise. He was born on the East Coast, so around a bonfire, he'd play the fiddle instead of the guitar. His second love was his boat, and he named it after his first love, Grandma. And every August, he celebrated his birthday there. I think we always will. A sale so big we could only call it the Super Sale. Super savings in every department store-wide. TVs, home audio, appliances, laptops, car starters, and more. Plus, no interest and no payments until 2024. All the deals at visions.ca. With the bigger spin, exciting levels like eight, three is better than one. You can win with a scratch. Win with a watch. Or win when you play for the Grand Prix at the OLG Prize Center. Play and instant tickets today for your chance to win. Playing the game of Survivor. That's a freaking game. All Survivor, Wednesday at 80 years old. The official inquiry into the government's use of the Emergencies Act in February is now underway. While this inquiry will deal with a wide range of issues, its focus will remain squarely on the decision of the federal government. Why did it declare an emergency? How did it use its powers? And were those actions appropriate? The government invoked never before used powers to bring an end to the Freedom Convoy process, which brought downtown Ottawa still and gridlocked Canada U.S. border crossings. Eric Thompson has more on what to expect throughout the process over the next six weeks. Wellington Street, the main road of Newport Hill has never been more. Off limits to cars and truck traffic, the most visible and lasting impact is this. Hey, hey, the convoy of protesters who blockaded streets last winter upset over such things as vaccine mandates. They shut down commerce and ordinary life in the city center. For weeks, authorities stood watch until Ottawa invoked the Emergencies Act that granted, among other things, extraordinary powers to police to clear people out of the downtown. But was the Emergencies Act appropriate, a measure so serious that it triggers a public inquiry? Ontario Appeal Court Justice Paul Rowe is the commissioner. Among those withstanding as participants, the federal, Alberta, and Saskatchewan government the cities of Ottawa and Windsor, the Ottawa Police Service, and a group of convoy organizers, including Tamara Leach and Chris Barber, who also faced charges that include obstructing police. Among dozens of expected witnesses, the Prime Minister said he will be available to testify. We move forward with uh, measures that are not to be taken lightly, but that we brought forward the Emergencies Act in a time-limited, measured way to be able to get the situation back under control. But the Canadian Solar Association questions the powers used to freeze assets of protesters and says Ottawa went too far, using the Emergencies Act not as a truly last resort. And it is our plan that their actions were unlawful and unconstitutional. The government has yet to prove that the legal threshold to invoke the act was met. For local shops that depend on visitors, harm is still being felt. Wellington Street has stayed, stayed closed. It's been devastating for us uh, to have these streets closed. There's concern that the impact on the local community will get short shrift in a politically charged national inquiry. But inquiry begins Thursday in Ottawa's Library and Archives building, very near where the process occurred. The hearing will last about six weeks, with the inquiry's report due next February. Eric Sorensen, Global News. Alberta's new premier spent her first full day in office addressing this that have prompted criticism nationwide after calling the unvaccinated the most discriminated against group in her lifetime. Smith stopped short of a point, I think. Instead, she says she didn't mean to trivialize discrimination. 
faced by minority communities. The Jewish Federation of Edmonton statement saying we have reached out to the Premier's office to express concerns and are meeting with Smith to discuss anti-Semitism, discrimination, and mandatory Holocaust education. And a QN University professor and leading researcher in gender and youth points out people within the 2S LGBTQ plus continue to face discrimination, including as recently as last month when a group was targeted with threats of violence for gathering. Being unvaccinated is a choice. Being part of the community or the Jewish community or the LGBT community is not a choice. So to make these comparisons is completely off base. British Columbia Premier John Horgan weighed in while on a Victoria radio show on Wednesday. Horgan called Smith laughable, saying she is focusing on a sliver of when there are other challenges going on. Experts predict that Canada's economy will hit a recession as early as next year. A new report shows lower income Canadians will likely be hit the hardest as purchasing power falls and debt servicing costs rise. Higher prices and interest rates are expected to shave $3,000 off the average household budget. The report says manufacturing will likely be one of the first sectors to pull back while the service sectors will remain resilient. Historic congressional hearings will wrap up in Washington, D.C. today. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol is set to present its closing argument. No witnesses will be caught. Members are promising substantial new footage of the insurrection and significant witness testimony. Since the last hearing, multiple members of former President Donald Trump's cabinet have testified it's been nearly three months since the committee last held a public hearing. Coming up, the future of vehicles. A flying car takes the skies in Dubai. Pillow-top mattresses, down-filled duvets, premium pillows, and so much more. Fall in. When I heard my mother had fallen, it was like everything stopped. When your mom was thinking about you, what's grandpa up to? What's he doing? Is he okay? If I call and she doesn't answer the phone, when I call back an hour, that worry never believed from you. If something was to happen, no. How do I reach out to someone? The advice would make me feel safe and help me keep my distance longer. Go crazy. Go her. Go cheese-filled. Go her. Go for a bite. Go quick. Go popular. Go healthy. Go easy. Go for more, please. Go for skillet gnocchi. Child artist, we ain't for that. Our new paint with a tough, resilient finish at Lowe's. Whoa, there's like 10 times more bedding options. Ah, what do I take? I know. Uh, live like this? Oh, hello, this is gorgeous. Shh, pick quietly. I should be shouting it from the rooftops. Lines and player forever. Shh. Can I use these? Yeah, sure. Can I steal them? What? No. Fine. But have you seen the have spread? Okay. Locking it in. Lock it in, baby. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by Allstate. One saves when they combine their home and auto with Allstate. From the Jetsons to Blade Runner, flying cars featured prominently in countless versions of the future. But they're now getting closer to becoming an everyday reality with teams and companies from all over the world working to perfect this technology. As Ross Lord reports, one flying car is a debut this week above the streets of Dubai. This is a new entry in an old contest, mastering the production of flying cars. It's the, will be the very important for the next generation flying car. The Chinese company Xpeng says X2 model can travel up to 
130 kilometers an hour, emitting zero carbon dioxide and could perform as a personal vehicle or for air patrols and emergency rescues. Xpeng says the X2 has a full motor mechanism for going back and forth between driving and flying, reaching new heights and a long-standing cultural obsession. Didn't you ever space ski to school? Some previous prototypes might be considered capable today, like this one from the 1940s that simply welded a small car to the bottom of a plane. Flying cars are now at the center of a global spending spree that includes the major automakers and individual developers, like Canada's Marcus Lang. He's taken his idea from Ontario to California's Silicon Valley. I think we've all had dreams of complete three-dimensional freedom. Xpeng says mass production of the X2 will start by 2024. The flying cars selling for about 150,000 US dollars each. Technology a long time ago could finally be coming true. Forward, Global News. It has come to an end here in Toronto. We're even in for some sunshine later today. Detailed look at that and what to expect this weekend coming up. After When we have help taking care of the small things, we can concentrate on the things. You start some money? Like making a new country a home. Helping Canadians shine for over 100 years. People think you aren't owed severance. You are fired for a reason. Employment lawyer says that is a myth. Most for cause terminations and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the employment lawyer first. Employmentlawyer.ca. It's the family cottage. But if you ask me, Really, Grandpa's happy place. Every day, he gets to catch the sunrise. We turn on the east coast, so around a bonfire, the instead of the guitar. His second love was his boat, and he named it after Grandma. And every August, we celebrate his birthday. I think we always will. Go cheese filled. Go popular. Go easy. Go for more, please. Go Olivieri Skillet. A sale so big we could only call it the Super Sale. Super Sale Department Store Wide. TV, home audio, appliances, laptops, more. Plus, no interest until 2024. See all the deals at visions.ca. Hey, Vanessa. So, this is where the party at, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, last for a minute. I got my little blackjack heater going myself. Okay. That's my guy Steve right there. Steve. Come on, give Fox a king. Give me the king. King time, Steve. He got the king. I got it. Still some ominous skin, not more than a shower or two for the next two hours, and then some sunny breaks developing later today. The cold front has moved through. Yes, the temperature is cooler, but this is still seasonal for this time of year. Just goes to show you how warm it was for the week. I want to talk about that front and where it's going, and I'll show you the radar in just a second. First, uh, let's start with our hour by hour forecast here in Toronto, the GTA. The uh, same for cities across southwestern Ontario, although it's been dry for longer and it's already sunny down in Windsor. So we're expecting that trend to continue into the later afternoon, 14 degrees for a high, and then dropping back to 9. Still a slight chance of a shower, and that goes for early Friday morning as well. So we'll be keeping an eye on this uh, unstable pattern over the next few days. And <laughs> I don't want to tell you what's coming next week because it's going to shock some people the amount of cold and Snow, snow for uh, much of the lake belt coming up by the middle of the next week, all because of this trough, this deepening trough that's going to set up shop around the Great Lakes. Now, that rain is accompanied by quite a bit of wind. Kingston gusts of 59, Ottawa 35. That's headed towards Montreal as well, and we could see anywhere from 20 to 
40, even 50 millimeters of rainfall. Thankfully, it's been dry lately, so this is beneficial rain. We're not going to see widespread flooding or anything like that across eastern Ontario. It does clear out tomorrow. Quite a sunshine, actually, uh, on the way. And even Saturday, after some morning showers, we should get back into sunny breaks throughout the afternoon. Friday and Saturday, both at about 13. Saturday comes in at 14, which is average for this time of year. And then as we go ahead through the rest of the weekend and into next week, this is when it gets interesting. Rain on Monday, 9, 7 by Wednesday. And there is that possibility, even in a place like Toronto, of seeing the first wet snow flurries. No accumulation here. Could see 15 or more centimeters as we get up north. And that is uh, quite early. There's still leaves on the trees. So we're going to talk a lot more about that setup coming up for places like Ottawa and Montreal. Less snow, but still showers through the next week. So gone are those beautiful sunny days, although we are going to see just a little bit brighter skies later today. Candace? And I guess the countdown is for sure for this behind you too, Anthony. Uh, we enjoyed it uh, while it lasted. <laughs> and before we go, globally recognized media timeout has put together a list of the top in the world and one Canadian song is getting recognized. Mile End in Montreal rounds out the top five being Restaurants, bookstores, flower shops, and bakeries. Fourth place goes to Ridgewood, New York City, with Wat Bo Village in Cambodia coming in at third. Sliding into second is Caix do Chore in Portugal, and Colonia Americana in Mexico takes eighth. The annual report looks at what areas are most popular with locals, as well as its accessibility, community vibes, food and drink, and overall culture. And Dundas West in Toronto came in at number 12. Thanks for tuning to Global News at noon, everyone. For updates on our top stories, you can head to globalnews.ca. Okay. Details about a relationship. I'm in love. <laughs> the camera's rolling. That's true. What she says about the love of her life. Then. Hi, with the Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys reveal what took so long to get the Christmas album. 29 years later, here we are. And share who made it. Plus, Shelton announces his departure from The Voice after season 23. While he's joined by some first time coaches for his final farewell. And Remembering an icon, celebrities mourn the late great Angela Lansbury. Great talent, so many memorable performances. This is the It's the latest look at Wakanda Forever and Hollywood's loss of the one and only Angela Lansbury. But we begin.